right, well, good morning, New Life. Great to see you here this morning. Welcome to those of you who have uh, tuned in online. It's great to have you with us. And yeah, we're looking forward to a great rooted season. And uh, God always does some amazing things. There's always so many great stories and testimonies uh, after each rooted session. Uh, so hopefully you find your spot if you've not gone through it yet. I know you'll be happy that you went through it. I have a question this morning that I'd like to ask you. How many of you have ever been lost in your life? With a show of hands, you've ever been lost? Lots of hands. Now, how many of you have ever been lost in the woods or in the forest? It is the scariest feeling that there is. I've been, I like going hunting, I like hiking, and so I'm often finding myself in the woods, and I've been turned around or even flat out lost a number of times, and it is the scariest feeling. You feel so helpless, and you can feel so hopeless, and you wonder, am I ever going to be able to, to get out of here and be able to find my way out? Well, today I have a lost experience that I want to share with you this morning that is from when I was 18 years old, and my dad and I were deer hunting. And uh, in case I lost some of you right there who may be anti-hunters, don't worry about it. Most of my hunting trips, I don't usually get anything, so it's really just a glorified hike. <laughs> so, but my dad and I were deer hunting out there, and, and we were in the St. Regis Forest in Kapowson, which is by pretty close to Mount Rainier. And 18 years old, and I was determined to get, I, I had still not gotten my first deer. And so I was determined, this is going to be my year. This is going to be my year. I'm going to get my first deer. And so we got up to our area. We drive through the gate, and the, the, the uh, St. Regis Force, they had a gate that would uh, be closed uh, overnight. So it would open up in the morning and then close it at night. So it was open up. We drive in. We get way up into the mountains and up into the forest and, and get out of the truck as we're driving up a logging road. And we, we get kind of a game plan. And my dad, says, my dad says, okay, you go this way, and I'll head over here this way. And then we'll meet back at the truck at about lunchtime, so maybe about 11 o'clock. And uh, we'll have some lunch, and then we'll go back out for our afternoon hunt. I said, okay. So we, we, my dad goes his way, and I start heading, heading off my way. And I, I go a little ways up the dirt road, the, the, uh, the logging road. And then, and then I find a spot that looks good. There was a little bit of a clearing from the road to the edge of the forest. And I, I found a spot that looked like a, a good spot. So I, I get through this little clearing, and I get to the edge of the forest, uh, the tree line, the, the woods, and... And uh, it, by the way, it was a rainy day, wet, rainy, cold, miserable. Nobody should be out here doing anything, but sometimes that could be good hunting conditions. It can be a lot easier to track a deer and so and see some fresh signs. So I, it wasn't long before I got, I got going, and I looked, and I got right on the trail of what I knew had to be a monster buck. I was hunting black tails, and, and I saw this, and I was like, oh, baby, this is it. And for some reason in my mind, I thought, I'm actually going to be able to sneak up on this deer, and I'm going to get him. Well, foolish me. You don't just sneak up on deer. <laughs> usually, if you're trying to track a deer, I mean, usually you just need them to come walking by. Uh, but more often than not, you think you're going to sneak up on them. You're just going to keep kicking them up and kicking them up and kicking them up. And it's just, it's, you know, you're not going to sneak up on them. But I was determined. I'm going to sneak up on this deer. And I'm going to get my first deer. And I'm following the tracks. And I'm following the tracks. And I start to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the woods. And this begins my lost story that I want to share with you this morning. And I learned, I learned a few life lessons that I want to share about getting lost and about how to get unlost, if you will. Because we all get turned around in life. We all lose our, our way in life at various points. But the, the, the key is to not stay there. We want to get out of that place and, and get back on track in our life. And so how do we get lost in the first place? Well, the first life lesson that I learned is that getting lost happens over time, one distracted step after another. It doesn't happen overnight. Usually when you get lost in life, it's not because you've made one bad decision in your life. It's not because of one bad choice. It's usually the result of a, a series of bad choices, a series of distracted steps where you've been focused by this thing, that thing, and the other thing. And it's led, to, led you to a place where you realize one day you come to your senses and you realize you look around at the scenery of your life and you realize 
I'm not where I need to be. How did I get here? Well, you didn't get there overnight. Usually it's over time. And then when you, you come to that realization, or you maybe you made some bad decisions and that's why you're where you're at, it can be a, the feeling can be so scary. You feel totally lost. You wonder, how did I get here? Am I ever going to get out of here? Well, back to my lost story. I mentioned that I had started to track this buck and I would determine that I was going to sneak up on it. And I'm out there in total stealth mode. I got my, I got my camouflage on, but yet I got my hunter orange on too. And I got my, I'm, I'm like, I'm like totally in hunter mode. And I was, I was like Elmer Fudd, the old Looney, old Looney Tunes cartoons fans out there. Those are the real cartoons. Yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. They were the best back in the day. So I'm like Elmer Fudd. Be wowie, wowie, quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> And I was determined, except I was hunting black-tailed deer, and I was determined I'm going to get him. So I'm tracking this thing, and I see, I see his big old, big old buck tracks. And I'm tracking him, and I'm, I'm just following these, and I'm totally in stealth mode. Being as quiet as I can be, I'm going to sneak up on this thing. Until the next thing you know, I realize I've been trying to track this thing for probably a couple, good couple hours. I'm very relentless. I don't give up easily. I thought I'm going to sneak up on him. As foolish as that was, I think I could do that. I finally came to my senses to realize I'm not going to sneak up on him. So I might as well just turn around and, and head back to the truck. I don't want to get too far into the forest here. And I didn't have a compass on me. I should have had a compass on me. I didn't. But uh, I, I finally decided, okay, I'm not going to sneak up on him. So head back the direction I came in. Now, the thing about getting in the woods is you'd think that when you go in a certain direction, you just turn around and walk back the way you came in, right? Well, it doesn't usually work out that way because usually you might think you're just going in straight and all you got to do is come back out straight, but usually you're, you're going in all kinds of different directions. It's so easy to get turned around in the woods. And as I decided to get back to the road, I turn around and I think, okay, I came straight in, come straight out. I start walking this way, and I'm like, nah, this doesn't look right. So I, okay, maybe I think it was that way. That tree right there, that maybe looks a little familiar. So I start going that way. Nope. <laughs> so, I, so I get over here, and I'm going down this. Maybe I got to go this way. It seemed like every direction I tried to go, the more lost I became, and the reality of my situation, of my demise was setting in. I am lost. How did I get here? How do I get out of here? Well, the way you get lost is by distractions. Over time, one distracted step after another. And this demon deer, I'm going to call him a demon deer because he was leading me astray. This demon deer, it's almost like he had an assignment on me to get me lost because he was just leading me deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the woods until I realized, man, I'm just lost right now. And I was so scared. The key to not get, see, we don't want to get lost. So instead of talking about how to get unlost, the key to not getting lost in the first place is to pay attention to the steps you're taking and make sure you're not distracted by things because you're going to get lost if you do. Pursuing, here's the thing, the key to avoid getting lost spiritually is to focus on the right things. Pursuing the right things in life will keep you on the right path. But the wrong things will always lead you down the path to becoming lost. It's just the way it is. You focus on the right things, you're going to be in a good place. You focus on the wrong things, you're going to get lost. So as followers of Jesus Christ, probably the majority of us here this morning are. Maybe some of us aren't. And you've just been really not have any kind of sense of direction in your life. God wants you to have some direction in your life. Jesus is the one that gives us that direction. In fact, when we turn our lives to him, uh, he said that he's the way, the truth, and the life. What's my way to get my lost? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul says, If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. 
Again, we're talking about our focus, not being distracted. Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things on earth. Set your minds on things that are above. See, there are so many things in this world that can distract us from our devotion to God. It could be a certain sin that we're prone to. Come on, can we get real? We're, we all have a certain sin that we're prone to. None of us are actually Jesus in this place. He's the only one that was immune from it, that could, never, that could always 100% resist temptation. But we're people, saved by grace, but and we got, we've got the Holy Spirit if, through faith in Jesus living within us, but we still have that old sin nature that we wrestle with, and it always wants to lead us in a wrong direction. So we might have a certain sin that we're prone to, that gets us distracted. It might be a relationship that's kind of toxic in our life and maybe not good for us spiritually. It could be a pursuit in our life. Maybe we're driven by ambition. Maybe a career. We're just so focused on this that we're, we're willing to sacrifice everything else that's good in our life because we just got tunnel vision on, on being successful. Whatever the case may be, getting lost happens by a series of distracted steps. And so the key is to focus on the right things and take the right steps and set our minds on things above, not on things below here on this earthly level. So let me encourage you to consider the steps you're taking in life. Consider the focus that you have in life. If you just ask yourself right now, where's my focus? Where would it be? Is it in the place it needs to be? Maybe, but maybe it's not. Maybe you're focused in some ways, but maybe in other areas you're, you're not as focused as you could be. Let me encourage you, get your focus where it needs to be. This is always the best place right here. Well, I don't know where my focus should be. You cannot go wrong by getting into God's word and letting his word guide you. His word is a light to our path. We cannot go wrong by following the word of God. The second life lesson that I learned through my lost experience is that when lost, reconnecting in prayer with your heavenly father is the most vital step to take. Reconnecting. And I say reconnecting because usually when we, when we find ourselves having been distracted and, and, and in a place where we're, we're, we're just lost, we're not where we used to be, our prayer life has suffered. In fact, sometimes our prayer life can become non-existent. Because we're so focused on pursuing maybe sometimes the wrong things that uh, we know usually when we're pursuing the wrong things. And when we're doing it that intentionally, uh, our prayer life can't help but suffer because we kind of just, we know we're making some choices we shouldn't be making. And so we, we kind of want to hide from God. But when we find ourselves in that place and we don't know where to turn, we don't know how to get out of the place that we find ourselves in. We try going this way. We try going that way. We try going this way. And nothing seems to be the right step to take. The most vital step to take in that moment is to not freak out, to not get into panic mode. Because when you start operating in life in panic mode, you're going to make some bad choices. And you're probably going to become more and more lost. The key is to stop, pause, take a deep breath, realize that you have a Father who loves you in heaven. And reconnect with him in prayer. And it doesn't have to be some special kind of prayer. It doesn't have to be some special prayer that you memorize, some prayer in a book, some prayer that's just recited. You don't have to sound a certain way. Just get that raw, real prayer from the gut. Where, it, I mean, just God, I am lost right now. Father, I don't know how I got here. Well, maybe I do know how I got here. I got distracted. But God help. Sometimes that's the most powerful prayer that you can pray. God help. God help. And he's right there saying, that's all I've been waiting for. I've seen how you've been going. I've seen where you've been going. And you might think you're so lost unredeemable. There's no reaching you, but I've watched you every step of the way. I've seen you every step of the way, and I've seen the distance that's grown between us, but I've been waiting for you to just call out to me. 
reconnecting with your heavenly father is the most vital step to pray to him. Back to my lost story. My dad had done something that would prove to be very vital to my lost experience in becoming found. He, he had bought us some walkie-talkies just shortly before this trip. Now, I have a walkie. This was before cell phones or anything. This was quite a while ago. It was even before these little guys right here. The walkie-talkie I had was like the, the kind you could only find in an army surplus store. Now, it was like the big, big kind. Uh, uh, that, I mean, this thing was like a honking walkie-talkie. And I realized, okay, I've got my walkie-talkie, so this was going to be my big honking walkie-talkie right, <laughs> right now. And I get my dad on, I've decided, okay, I need, to, I need to get my dad. So I turn on my walkie-talkie, I'm like, Dad, are you there? Dad, are you there? Dad, are you there? Finally, he answers. He's like, yeah, Jeff, I'm here. I said, Dad, I'm so lost right now. I was tracking this buck, and he just kept leading me deeper and deeper into the forest. And I, I've tried to get out. I don't know where I'm at. Dad, help me. <laughs> he said, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your gun and I want you to fire three shots, one after the other. And I had a 30 out six. And if you've ever heard of 30 out six, they are loud. Those shots just echo for miles through the woods. And I said, okay. He said, I fire off three shots and then I'll hear what direction you're at and I'll, I'll come get you. I said, okay. So I put my walkie talkie down. I get my gun. goes the second shot. And I thought, okay, dad's on his way. I get my dad back on there. I said, dad, so what direction do you need to come? And he says, did you shoot your gun? <laughs> no kidding. I, at that, now at this point, I was so scared. If I thought I was lost before, now I knew I'm way lost. If he can't hear that, I'm miles away from him. How could I have possibly gotten so far away? And some of you might be wondering that in your life. How could I have possibly allowed myself to get so far away from where I need to be in life, from my Father in heaven, but what I want you to know this morning is it doesn't matter how lost you may feel, how lost you may think you are. Your heavenly father is just a prayer way and he's waiting for you to call on him. Isaiah 55, 6. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Just call upon him. Say, God help. That's all you've got to say. God help. God help, it might be two words that you say, God help, but God knows everything else that's behind those two words that maybe you just don't know how to articulate. Don't worry about trying to articulate it. Just, just have a, an honest heart cry to God. God help me, I'm lost. Get that connection, that prayerful connection with God. You might think, well, I've wandered too far away. You have never wandered too far away to where you cannot pray and to where he will not hear you. Trust me, if you're watching online, you might feel lost in your life. I want you to know you were never outside of the reach of your heavenly father. You were never beyond his ability to hear you. In fact, he's been watching every step of the way and he's right there with you. So reconnect. Let that be the step that you take. Reconnect with him in prayer. The third life lesson that I learned from my lost experience is that when lost, find the road and get to it at any cost. Find the road and get to that road at any cost. And let me give you a little practical advice. How do you find a road? Here's the best way to find a road. 
If you get lost in the woods, find a possum and follow it. You'll be in the middle of the road in no time. (laughs) Hopefully you don't become roadkill, but at least you'll be on the road. (laughs) When when, When lost, find the road at any cost. Back to my lost story. So after wandering around and around and around in the woods for such a long time and being so scared now, because I don't have a clue how to get back. And, and, and again, it was, a, it was a dark, gloomy, rainy day. And I was in th- thick woods, thick forest, big, fat, tall, Douglas firs. And, and, uh, and it, it, was, it was a scary place to be. And I couldn't even hardly see the sky through the, through the trees until finally, as I'm wandering around, I saw, as I looked in the distance and I looked up, toward the top of the tree line, and it looked like what was maybe a clearing. I thought, I'm headed for that clearing because I don't know where else to go. Maybe my truck is on the other side of that clearing. Maybe I accidentally stumbled my way onto where the road is and where the truck is, and my dad's going to be right there. So I I, I started to, to, to wander through, making my way through the shrubs, and it was really thick. And anybody know what Devil's Club is? It's these big leaves, and, and they have the, the, the stems are just, they got these thorns on them. They're like, if you've ever got stuck by one of these, I mean, they're painful. And I'm wading through Devil's Club. No devil in hell is going to keep me from getting to where I need to be. And so I'm wading through the Devil's Club, and I, I finally get through the, through the timber and to the edge of the timber line. And as I come out, what it came out to, that clearing I saw, was a clear cut. And I came out to the edge of the woods. And I see this clear cut, but there was no truck. I don't see my dad. As I looked around, I saw a big mountain over here. I saw a huge ridge right in front of me. I see hills over here. As I looked around, nothing looked familiar I had never been here before. I had been wandering around for hours in the woods. And now I come out to this clear cut and I look around and nothing is familiar. And I was so scared. I think I was even, I was 18 years old. and I'm, an, I'm a young man. I don't cry. No, I think I was crying. I was definitely praying and I was crying. And as much as I wanted to see my dad... My cry was, Mama, (laughs) Mama. Dad's good, but sometimes only Mama will do. (laughs) And so I get to the clearing, and I don't know where to go now. I could go back the way I came in, but I was just so lost in there. Now where do I go? And all of a sudden, as I looked up at this ridge that was before me, way up there. I mean, it was high up there. Anything that was at the top of it was like a just, you could barely see it up there. And I looked and all of a sudden I saw a truck slowly driving. And I thought, baby, where there is a truck, there's a road. And so I got tunnel vision on making it to that road. Nothing was going to keep me from making it to that road. And I mentioned it was just de- raining and pouring. And, uh, and, and I, as, I, as I got through that clear cut, I get to the base of this, this ridge, and I'm seeing all kinds of deer sign at this point that normally would excite me, but it didn't excite me now. I was not going to let any deer in hell distract me from getting to that road. Not that demon deer or anything. I was cursing those deer with every step I took. Because they're the reason why I got lost. But at least now I knew where a road was. And I was going to get to it at any cost. And so I'm literally, I got my 30-06 in one hand. And I got a free hand uh, over here in my other hand. And I'm literally going up this steep ridge in the mud, in the rain. And I'm doing an army crawl up this ridge. Doing whatever I've got to do to get to the top where that road is. Nothing is going to keep me from the road. And see, when you're lost in life, the, at, at any cost, the thing you've got to do is find the road and get on it. Don't let anything keep you from it. Seeing that truck up there at the top of that ridge, for me, was like hearing the voice of God saying, there's the road, Jeff. Get there. And the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, 
And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, this is the way, walk in it. For me, it was like God sent that truck caused me to lift up my eyes at just the right time where I would see that truck and it's like God was saying, Jeff, this is the way, walk in it. I said, okay, here I go. Nothing gonna keep me from the road. If you find yourself lost in life, turned around, you've been distracted, you don't know what road you're on. Are you even on a road or are you just wandering around in the woods and in life? So lost, so turned around, no sense of direction. Find the road. Find the road. Find the road. What road? This is the road that leads to life. Maybe you've neglected it. Maybe you've not cracked it open in a long time. Don't let anything distract you in this moment of feeling lost from finding the road and getting on it. And the fourth, the fourth life lesson that I learned from my lost experience is that when lost, there's nothing more comforting than your father's embrace. Nothing more comforting than your father's embrace. When I finally made it to the top of that ridge, I come out, and sure enough, there's a road. And it was a, it was a logging road. And I get up, and I'm on this road. I was so relieved, <laughs> so relieved to finally have some sense that I'm not going to be spending the night in the woods with no survival gear, by the way. I didn't have any survival gear. All I had was my gun and a couple snicker bars in my pocket. You, gotta, you go in the woods, you got to have snicker bars. <laughs> and so that's all I had. And I thought for sure, I'm, I'm going to be spending the night in the woods. But now, when I finally found the road, I was so relieved. And I get my dad back in the walkie-talkie. Dad, are you there? Dad, are you there? Daddy, are you there? Finally, yeah, Jeff. I said, Dad, I found a road. He said, okay, well, do you know what road it is? No. He said, well, walk up the road and see if you can find a road number, you know, logging roads. They might just say road number 2412 or whatever. And I said, okay. So I start walking up this road and I finally came to a road number. I get my dad back on the walkie talkie. I said, dad, I found a road number. At this point, he had the forest ranger because he knew I was lost. You know, maybe I was going to be in the woods overnight. And so he he said, okay, what's the road number? And I told him the road number. He said, okay, I've got the forest ranger with me. Don't move, stay where you're at, and we're going to come to you. Oh, I was so relieved. I was so relieved. And my dad finally got there as I'm just sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting. They finally, I see, I see the truck coming up, and they get out. My dad gets out of the truck, and I could see the look in his eyes. I thought I was scared. Probably my dad was more scared than I was, his boy out there lost. He gets out of that truck and he comes and he gives me a hug like I'd never been hugged by my dad before. And it felt so good in that moment, so comforting, so such a relief to feel the loving embrace of my dad. Who was not, by the way, my dad's not a huggy, kissy, warm, fuzzy feeling kind of guy. He's not that way. My mom's more that way. My dad's not. Um, not afraid of affection, but he's just not that way. But in that moment, he hugged me like he'd never hugged me before. And he told me that even though I've, I was his 18-year-old son, young man, in that moment, I was like, like his five-year-old little boy. And I know that he felt so good hugging me, and I know that his for me, I felt so good, so comforted, so loved by the embrace of my father. 
If you're lost, that's the desired outcome. That's the end of the story that God wants to be for you. He doesn't want you to be lost forever. He wants to help you find your way out and he wants to meet you where you're at. I'm going to close with one part of the prodigal son, the, the story of the lost son, the, the, uh, the parable of the lost son, the prodigal son, who had wandered, wandered away from his father, took all of his, his inheritance, squandered on wild living, finally comes to his senses, decides he's going to come, come back home, return to his father. And I love this part. In Luke 15, verse 20, that shows the father's reaction. It says, but while he was still a long way off, while he, the son, as he's returning home, was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. He didn't run to show him what's what. He didn't run to beat him upside the head and say, how dare you allow yourself to get so lost? How dare you do the things you've done? He ran so that he could embrace him. The father saw him a long way off. There's my son. And he was so excited to see his son, he couldn't contain himself. He couldn't even just let his son come and walk up to him. He had to. He felt compelled in his heart to run and be with his son and embrace him and hug him and kiss him. Today, you might be that son. You might be that daughter. You might be that child of God who has wandered and wandered and wandered and you have felt so distant from your father in heaven. But he sees you here today. If you're watching online, he sees you right where you are at today. And he is here to reach you, to love you, to embrace you, not to heap guilt and shame and condemnation but love and comfort. As we sing this last worship song together, as the worship team leads us into this last song, this is an opportunity for any of us here who have felt lost in our lives. Maybe today we feel lost, maybe totally lost, maybe just a little off track, maybe you're turned around. I think I know how to get back, but... No, I'm not where I need to be. Maybe you're here today. You've never, you've never made a decision for Jesus. And you're lost spiritually. You can give your life to him today. And let the love of God touch your life for the first time ever. And his love will change you. The altars are going to be open as we sing this last song together. I invite anybody who would like to come forward. Spend some time with your father. Just pour out your heart to him. He's here for you. He's here for you. And feel his love, his touch, and his embrace. Amen? Worship team, let's, let's worship. Stand to your feet with us.
Father, Lord, we come to you today, and we thank you, Lord, for running to us. Father, we run to you, but it's because you've ran to us first. Lord, today, we thank you for mercy. We thank you for grace, your amazing grace, and we thank you for your amazing love. Lord, we return to you with our whole heart today. We receive your love right now. Just tell him, Father, I receive your love. I receive your love. Lord, we give you our hearts, Lord. We commit our hearts to you afresh today. We give you our hearts. Just tell him, Father, I give you my heart. Here's my heart, Father. I offer it to you. And today, Lord, we turn from anything that's distracted us in the past we, we, we turn our eyes to you 
You are all I need. Would you just tell him now, Lord, you're all I need. Father, you are all I need. Thank you, Lord, for reaching us. Thank you for your grace that covers our sin, erases a flawed past, and sets a path before us to begin to walk in, and it's a path of life and goodness and mercy and hope that ultimately leads to heaven, but leads to a close relationship with you here in this life. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we bless your name. Amen. 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 Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week, and we hope to see you again next week. Blessings.